you know, after this weekend, it seems like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And this time, it's not just a Tesla that's on fire. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. I'm wearing my Houston Oilers throwback shirt in honor of the butt kicking they took yesterday. Really wasn't pulling for either team, didn't care, but I love this shirt. So, um, Aren't the Oilers really more the Tennessee Titans than the Houston Texans? Yes. <laughs> okay. But it's still Houston. <laughs> it is still Houston. I know. Okay. It doesn't matter. I know. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, here you go busting my bubble again. I gotta get um <laughs> what just occurred to me. Like I think the Oilers became the Tennessee Titans and the Texans were born from nothing. Correct. That's right. Okay. Like a phoenix rising from anywho. Uh Jimmy, the weekend went really well for Alabama. Mm-hmm. They did get one commitment and a transfer from uh Parker Brailsford. Uh <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you something. You know, I had this thought, I was like, okay. I know what the what the anti sentiment will be. I know what some people who were anti Alabama or or negative Nellies are going to say. Well, would Alabama trade rosters with Alabama? I mean, with Washington last year, the answer is no. We would not trade rosters. However, if you ask me, would I trade centers? It is a no brainer. So it is. It is. Both things can be true. Alabama clearly has a better roster than Washington. Washington clearly has a couple of positions that are in better shape than what Alabama had. I mean, I think that's just the bottom line. And look, uh, when you think about transfer centers, one Landon Dickerson comes to mind, and uh, we've done pretty well with those guys. This cannot be uh, overstated as to how big a deal it is to land Parker Brailsford. I mean, this this is a, a huge, huge. Uh, for See, you can sign a kid out of the portal – and he improves your team. You know, like, hey, we need to add a dude because the team needs some help. Okay, so we did that. You can add a kid out of the portal that improves your starting lineup. We did that. This kid is now, I wouldn't say it's automatic he's the starter because, hey, let's make him beat people out. Let's not just hand him anything. Let's make him beat out Brockermeyer. You got to beat out Rock Montgomery. You know, you don't want to hand him anything. But is this kid likely to start? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's very likely to start. So he's improved the start lineup. This kid goes beyond that, Luke. He he's improved the team over last year. This is a better center than what Alabama had last year, as you just pointed out. Alabama will now be improved at center in 2024 as opposed to 2023. Uh, this is an all-conference player who's going to have three years to improve as he continues to get coaching. I think our strength center is something that's very likely going to improve him with David Ballou in the science center and and our nutrition program. Uh, this is a guy that's going to help. He's experienced in this offense. He's going to help the other offensive linemen take the new coaching. He's going to uh, know uh, the uh, adjustments and assignments and the line calls. Uh, he'll be a leader. Uh, and he's got three more years of eligibility. This is this is a grand slam home run. And, and uh, centers don't him. leave early, by the way. They never no, do. No. Especially ones that show up weighing 270 pounds. And, and here's the other thing. You want me to say something incredibly stupid? Oh, feel free. Uh, it's sort of my thing. Um, but, no, I'm saying there, there, there are non-Alabama fans who listen to this, and I understand it like they've been drinking our tears, and I get it, and sometimes they just want to know the enemy. I'm going to say something that's going to make them roll their eyes. If we had Parker Brailsford on last year's team, we win the national championship. I don't think that's unreasonable. It's certainly not dumb. It's but not it's, unreasonable. Well, it, the reason they're going to say it's dumb is you're telling me a center makes that big of a difference. When the other center is worm burning snaps back at a fantastic speed and costing us drives. And again, I have no problem with Seth McLaughlin and he's going to Ohio state. And I wish him the best. I mean that with all sincerity, I swear to God, yeah. best of luck to you. It didn't work here. So be it. But if you're telling me that we would have had a guy that could could have cut down, cut those bad snaps in half, we win the national championship. 
Yeah. Somebody made a good point earlier. I hadn't really thought about it. I'll go back and watch the tape to make sure this really happens. But I think it is true. When Seth snapped a good one to Jalen, he often bobbled it last year. Jalen bobbled good snaps. I think it's because he was so shocked, <laughs> you know, that a snap had hit him in the belly button that he was like, what is this? What sorcery is this? I didn't know that the ball could be placed there. And it kind of took him by surprise. Now, I, I think just making the snap more of an automatic thing is going to improve Jalen Milrow. I mean, yeah. and you just made the point of how it could have helped last season. Certainly going to help this upcoming season. Uh, Parker Brailsford, I don't want to overstate how great he is. I'm sure he's good. I'm sure he's good. And I think for the next two to three years, he's going to be a contender to make all SEC teams and not just all Pac-12 teams. I don't want people to think I'm saying this guy's Landon Dickerson. He can be a first-round pick. I, I don't know anything about that. I'm just saying this. He's improved the team. He's improved the starting lineup and is probably an upgrade over what Alabama had in 2023. Th that is the poor doing work right there I mean that uh, this, this is just tremendous and adding him means a lot more than losing I don't want to name names but we lost three four five backup players that made headlines when they left but they were backup players adding this guy is uh worth losing five six seven eight backups this guy's just improved the starting lineup I, I couldn't agree more and <sighs> Boy, I know it sounds so homerific to say that a center would have made that big of a difference. But I could also yeah. say that a, a, a holder on a long field goal in 2013 like Vinny Sinceri might have made a difference in Alabama winning the national championship too because maybe they make the tackle on Chris Davis. It, again, we can do these ifs and buts and candy and nuts and all that. I just really believe that this is such an upgrade mm -hmm. at this position we did lose a lot of dudes to the transfer portal. Would I trade Parker Brailsford for Caleb Downs? I'm going to tell you, it's closer than you think because the snap is so important. I just love Caleb Downs so much. Would I trade him for Julian Sayan? I I'd probably would because we don't know Julian Sayan yet. The, the hard trade is Caleb Downs because I know how good Caleb Downs is. Um, but what this has done, if you ask me, getting him is – it should alleviate a lot of fears for people going forward in the sense that, hey, we played last year with a center that was not snapping well, and now he's gone and we're going to, have to play with his backup. No, now we got a new guy coming in that's that's a freshman All-American. That should make everybody feel a lot better. Now, we've got other things to worry about, and we're going to address those uh, here in this next segment. But I do have to tell everybody about FanDuel. You know how much I love FanDuel. Boy, yesterday was so much fun in the NFL and in college basketball. And on FanDuel, you can go for the action on all these different things because, you know, the NFL season is winding down. Now is the time to get in on FanDuel. You'll love it. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Go check it out ASAP. You're going to absolutely love it. There's no doubt about it. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 bucks in bonus bets, whether you win or whether you lose. The app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Those are a ton of fun, by the way. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and much, 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 much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup or a chip shot field goal. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. NFL. Don't you cut in on my live or I do. I like the um, NFL part at the end every single time. When I think FanDuel, I think NFL. The NFL is pretty cool. Now, we're going to get into some other stuff, but I, I do want to say yesterday Christian Harris showed out. Oh, he sure did. Boy, I thought he looked great. Uh, I didn't – Mechie may have had some – I didn't watch the game, like, all the way through. Mechie may have had some catchies. He played. He played. I can't remember him catching a ball, but he, he played. Um, and then, of course, uh, Will Anderson. And, you know, Will Anderson is just going to be a, such a problem for everybody for so long. He's just going to be such a problem. Um and, uh, of course, Baltimore has Marlon Humphrey, who has irritated some Alabama fans here recently with some comments, but whatever. I still love me some Marlon. Um, so, Jimmy, there was a it was a big recruiting weekend, so we got Parker mm -hmm. Brailsford. As of this recording, we mm -hmm. don't have anybody just yet. 
But we feel good about some other transfers, right? And, you know, you're going to need to update everybody on uh, Noah Carter and Ryan Williams as well. Yeah, uh, let's talk about uh, Noah Carter. Uh, pass rusher, uh, great. I mean, I really like this guy so much. So much. And, hey, don't listen to me. Listen to On3. I mean, uh, the best in the business when it comes to ranking kids. You can go to his uh, prospect page at, at On3 and, and look how On3 ranks Noah Carter uh, at, at like an elite prospect. Personally, I consider any kid in the top, you know, 300 is an elite prospect. That That's someone that, I mean, top 300 prospects in the entire United States. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty elite. I know other people go, no, you got to be top 100. Uh, those are super elite kids to me. Uh, I think uh, I think Noah Carter is borderline super elite. Uh, I think all three has him right about 120. Super athlete, uh, pass rusher, gets downhill fast, shot out of a cannon fast. He is as fast a, a pure pass rusher as you'll ever see. Reminds me a little bit of Nicholas Harbor from a couple cycles ago in terms of how fast he is as a pass rusher. Uh, also, like Nicholas Harbor, Noah Carter plays a wide receiver. He returns punts. I mean, imagine Will Anderson returning punts. Um, but yeah. Noah Carter hey, would let be. Let me stop a, you. Out, yeah. Right. We oh, used yeah, to sure. talk, you remember Ezekiel Knight? Yeah. We've talked about him before because um, I think he, act, he, I know he played in, didn't he? Did he play wide receiver for a minute for Alabama? Or no? I think he might have. I think he might have. I think when he showed up, he might have played wide receiver initially, and then it was moved to defense where he sort of became a next level oh. type prospect before medical things took him out because Zeke was on his way to being a dude. I love that, that you mentioned Zeke there, Luke, because that, that that's a good comp. And it reminds me that that's who this kid is. I mean, I think he's Zeke. Uh, he might be a little better because he might be a little bigger, you know, at the same age. Uh, I, I think adding Noah Carter is great. This is not a, some fans, the cynical fan, they, they just automatically go to, well, with all everybody that left, you know they got room. They can just take anyone. No, no, no. That that's not what this kid is at all. This kid is a. Uh, we evaluated him to come to Washington, but I don't care if they moved us to Alabama or Georgia or the Green Bay Packers. I'm taking this kid with me. Uh, that's how good he is. So, uh, adding Noah Carter would be to the sign. Now, keep in mind he would be a member of the signing class. He would be in the, um, you know, the the signing class and, and like Jay Sean Ross and Caden Jones, and Sterling Dixon. He would be a linebacker joining them. Real interesting to see what position he's going to play. I've got to get used to this myself, Luke. The defense, particularly in the front seven, is changing dramatically in terms of how we line up, in terms of what we're looking for at each position. So I'm not 100% sure whether this kid's going to be what amounts to a defensive end in the new alignment or if he's going to be an off-ball linebacker. Uh, I think he's capable of playing either spot with his uh, speed and athleticism, probably an outside guy. And I, I think he's very similar to the kid Alabama has signed in this class, Jay Sean Ross. But to be honest, I, I would rank Noah Carter uh, a little bit better. I mean, and what you're saying a lot, I like Ross. Uh, I think Noah Carter is a little bit better than Jay Sean Ross. Okay, let's talk about Jeremy Bernard. By the way, Jeremy Bernard, I love this. When I was in uh, college at Alabama, uh, uh, Sherman Williams was on the team. And we used to play the uh, college football game on Sega, me and some other guys. And there was a friend of mine named Tommy that lived in the SAE house with me. And uh, we used to always, like, make nicknames for different players. And he came up with a good one for uh, – he said, Sherm the germ, making people sick. I used to love that. And now so we're like, now we got Jeremy Bernard making people sick. So I, I've never forgotten that. I've heard all your stories. That's a that's – a New one on me. That's pretty good. I know Sherman. Every, I mean, every time I we play, Sherman. I'm, I'm going to tell Sherman the story. Sherm, making people sick. <laughs> Looking forward to telling Sherm the story. Uh, so, but Sherman Jeremy Bernard is a great wide receiver. Um, yeah, pretty good. So, yeah, I, I'm still working on a comp. I got a, uh, at least one buddy who's super high on him. He is probably going to show up our best receiver, which is saying a lot. Here, here's the upside. You know whose story this is somewhat similar to? People are going to hear this and get carried away or think I'm making this comparison. I'm not. But his story is similar to Jamison Williams. And, mm -hmm. and I say that in the sense that at Washington, he was wide receiver four, and he wasn't catching a ton of balls. He was catching some balls, and they were trying to get him involved in the return game because they just, hey, we need the ball in this guy's hands. 
but he's not one of our best three receivers. So Alabama's reception of, of him is going to be kind of mild. It's going to be like, oh, great, we signed Washington's fourth best receiver. Big deal. Well, their first three receivers are all freaks. One of them is the best receiver in the draft or, or, or just behind Marvin Harrison. The other two are no worse than day two picks in the draft. So Jeremy Bernard was their wide receiver four. He would have been wide receiver one at a ton of places and might be wide receiver one at Alabama. I would certainly put him in the mix with Kobe Prentice and Kendrick Law in terms of like who would be Alabama's best receiver right now. Uh, Jeremy is also uh, experienced in the return game. I would now make him the clubhouse leader to be the punt returner and kick returner. And by the way, I'm acting like he's committed. He hasn't committed. Uh, this is one we're waiting on uh, Sunday morning at uh, 1030 a.m. when we record this. He is not committed, uh, but uh, I'm optimistic. We're optimistic at BOL. Uh, BOL, there's a prediction that he will commit. Uh, we have a pretty good batting average with that at BOL, so I'm uh, I'm very optimistic here. Again, he would be the uh, the clubhouse leader to be kick return, punt return guy. Six foot, 200. How about that, Luke? He's, he's a kick return, punt Most of the time when you're like, oh, he's great at returning punts, you think, Oh, cool. 5'10, 175. Now, this kid's six foot 200. He's he's built a little more like Caleb Downs, the punt returner, uh, than a little Javier Arenas. So, Jeremy Bernard would be impactful. Uh, is he Jamison Williams? No, no, no. Don't get carried away. Not Jamison Williams. The story is like JMO's. And I think because, like JMO was the fourth guy at Ohio State, a lot of our fans under, underestimated how good he was. Uh, those same fans will be making the same mistake with this guy. He, he's legit good uh, and will absolutely be in the first team rotation at Alabama in the fall at wide receiver. So he would be a, a boost and, and a guy that you would add that would play and, again, a return guy. Uh, weirdly, for those that don't know the life story, he signed with Michigan State out of high school, played his freshman year, freshman year there, played immediately, was not uh, hugely impactful, but, I mean, but he was a true freshman. How weird is it, though, that uh, this kid was Peyton Thorne, a, a wide receiver for Peyton Thorne at uh, Michigan State, oh, will now be a wide receiver at Alabama. All right, and then uh, quickly, Jabbar Muhammad, Alabama yeah. didn't – a lot of fans didn't think we had a shot. We do have a shot. We do have a shot at Jabbar Muhammad. Great interview by Joseph Hastings this morning on BOL. If you're a member there, check it out. Jabbar Muhammad starts talking and does not stop. It, it, that interview went on and on and on forever. I uh, joked with Hastings this morning about how – Hope your tape recorder had a lot of bandwidth there. That that guy gets talking, and he's he's the Jimbo Fisher of prospects. Uh, he uh, he liked Alabama a lot. He raved on and on and on about the facilities and resources. I get the impression that Jabbar Muhammad went into this with the idea that he was going to sign with Texas or maybe Oregon, and has come to Alabama and has been blown away. This might be what I would call a visit uh, visit signature, and by that meaning. The visit was so good, he signed, uh, as opposed to, hey, I'm going to leave Washington. I think I want to go to Alabama. Uh, I, I think I think our, re our resources uh, made a big impact with him. Adding Jabbar Muhammad would be the equal or more so of the Parker Brailsford. Uh, he would be an all-conference add at a position of huge need. This would what be a big deal that? for Alabama. What about Ryan Williams? Everybody's going to want to know about that. You muted yourself out on that call if I dig it. <laughs> then, see, I didn't mute myself didn't. long enough. I didn't I mute myself long you. enough. That was a that was a still getting over a kidney stone cough. Can you get a that's how bad my kidney stones were? I'm coughing days. You coughed later. up your kidney stone? I'd rather cough it up. I wish I had. <laughs> um Ryan's visit went extremely well. Here's something we all need to consider as a fan base. The kid might be a gomp which is like the best news ever. I mean, I, I think the kid personally, this is my view of it. This isn't anyone. This is just my opinion. I think under Saban, he was coming to Alabama for sure and knew this for a long time. And, and it made him a huge fan of Alabama. I mean, a fan like all of us are fans. I think he was in love with the idea of playing for Alabama. Then Saban left, and I'm sure that made his head spin. But coming back to Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa this weekend reminded him of how much he loves this place. Um, I'm not going to predict just yet Ryan to Alabama because I don't want to jinx it. Uh, but uh, I know this. I'm not going to be surprised. 
I'm not going to be surprised if it's Alabama. Uh, I know he doesn't know Kalen DeBoer and Ryan Grubb. I know he just met Austin Mack and was in his head. He was showing up with Julian Sand. He just now met Austin Mack. I'm sure that made quite an impression, though, as a six foot six quarterback that can throw the ball from Washington to Alabama uh, would. But uh, I, I, I'm not going to predict Ryan to Alabama, but I feel better about it today than I have at any day since Coach Saban retired. That's awesome. Uh, and then very quickly, KJ Lacey made yeah. a sort of a surprise visit uh, as a quarterback from Sarah Land, who's Ryan Williams' quarterback. He will spend another year in high school. He's not going to enroll. Uh, he's not going to graduate early and enroll and all that. So he'll be at Sarah Land another year, but he's a fabulous quarterback. And um, I've been saying all along, look, it looks like George McIntyre is going to go somewhere else. Uh, obviously, Juju Lewis committed to uh, USC. Underwood uh, committed to LSU. Not saying Alabama can't get in on all those guys, but I love KJ Lacey. I would be glad to take him. I'm a, yeah, I'm I'm one of the biggest KJ Lacey fans out there. I, I will even personally rank rank KJ above some of these other guys, and and I realize that's a minority opinion, and 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 the, the true experts would scoff at me for that. But I just love KJ Lacey. He's always reminded me of Bryce, but I mean that in more of an intangible sense than a tangible sense. Yeah, he's he's short, shorter and wears number nine, not the biggest kid. But you know how Bryce is just this unbelievable, charismatic locker room guy? And that's KJ. I mean, uh, KJ would be an awesome recruiter, by the way, for the 2025 class. He would just bring in everybody. Uh, I love him as the point guard distributor. It would be interesting to see how he fits in the grub <laughs> offense which is different than than what Nick Saban was trying to do at Alabama. And they, they may look at KJ as not a great fit. Uh, we, we don't know. Uh, they're just starting their evaluations. But I'm a giant KJ Lacey fan. I know uh, everyone's hopeful about Juju Lewis, George McIntyre, and I get it. I'm hopeful too. They're, they're incredible prospects. I'm just saying I look at KJ like I look at those guys, and I will be as excited to land a KJ Lacey if it happens. But let's remember this, though. He's committed to Texas. That's a pretty good football program these days. And, uh, hey, just because Alabama offers and pushes, that doesn't mean automatically that K.J. Lacey's going to go, yeah, 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 to heck with Texas. I mean, playing, being a quarterback and playing for Sark is pretty appealing to kids. Ask Arch Manning, who chose that situation over anybody's in the country. All right, Jimmy, we've saved uh, the worst for last. Alabama took it on the chin yesterday. We got to talk about it. So basketball, the travels to Knoxville and, uh, you know, look, Tennessee took it to Alabama pretty good. They they beat – I think it was the worst loss of the Nate Oates era. Um, I think I saw that in at Alabama. And, look, Tennessee is old – not old, they're mature, they're experienced, and they are tough. And uh, Alabama didn't shoot well, um, but I'll say this. If Tennessee is allowed to play that physically – Against anybody, they'll beat them because they are that tough, that good. But they, the whistles were swallowed yesterday. It swallowed for both sides. I'm not saying it was a, but when the when a, the game is officiated that particular way, Tennessee can beat anybody in the country and maybe easily. That's why Tennessee, in my opinion, does not do well when tournament time comes around. Nobody lets them play like that. You just don't get to play like that. In fact. They play in Tuscaloosa later this year. I'd be willing to bet if Tennessee plays that same way they played this Saturday, Alabama may beat them and may beat them by the same score because Tennessee's going to get in foul trouble. Um, that being said, this Tennessee team's really, really good. Uh, they, they, they are. They've got, they've got guys that can shoot. Connect is fabulous. Connect. Let's let's call a spade a spade. Connect is what we wanted Grant Nelson to be. Um, he's he's a fabulous player. I love Ziggler. I'm not a Tennessee fan by any stretch of imagination. I love I love Ziggler. Um, Vescovy is very good. Uh, Adu, I think is how you say it, is very good. They just got some dudes that um, they look like uh, – it, it looks like a 7A team playing a 4A team sometimes with them because they're so physically mature and they're strong. They, as I said, when Alabama played Mississippi State, Mississippi State and Tennessee are the two most physically imposing teams in the conference, if you ask me. And um, so, boy, that I'm glad that game's out of the way. Frankly, Alabama was due a stinker 
This is basketball. That's going to happen. Kansas lost at West Virginia yesterday. I'd rather have the stinker at Knoxville and maybe play better this Wednesday against Auburn. I think this Auburn game is huge because if Alabama gets the win, it's like this massive race for first place. If Auburn gets the win, you got to consider Auburn the clear favorite to win the SEC. So huge game for Alabama coming up Wednesday. Auburn's playing as well as anybody in the country right now. It's just a hiccup in the schedule. We got to play at Tennessee and then Auburn uh, back to back. I think Alabama's really good. Uh, this is a good Alabama team that has a chance to win a bunch of games, make the NCAA tournament, get to the NCAA tournament, make some noise. And I say that to say, I think Tennessee, Kentucky, and even Auburn are teams I think capable of not only making the tournament, but of winning the NCAA tournament. And if the NCAA tournament is played in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, I would bet all I have on Tennessee to win the national championship. <laughs> if that game, if the NCAA tournament was played in Knoxville, uh, Tennessee would win the national championship. I, that, and and I, I, I half joke and I half mean it seriously because Tennessee's good enough to win the national championship, even on a neutral floor. Uh, they're very, very, very good, very talented. Uh, Connect is incredible. He's such a great two guard. I mean, to me, he's a lottery pick because it's clear what he is. Jimmy Dykes made a great observation about Grant Nelson. I can't believe I haven't, I haven't used this myself or didn't think of it myself until Jimmy Dykes said it's so true. Grant Nelson is a great player without a position. And, and I think that's what really hurts him. I mean, is he a center? Is he a power forward? Is he a small forward? Is uh, You know what Dalton Connect is. He's a two guard at 6'6 six, six and built like he is. And the NBA is falling all over themselves to draft him as a two guard because that's exactly what he is. And, and he's so good at all the two guard things. Um, but, but man, Tennessee is such a good, good team. Auburn's really good. It, hey, it's a home game. I, I suspect Alabama is going to play one of its best games of the year on Wednesday. I, I think we're going to see Alabama at their best. And I'm just asking, will it be enough? Because Auburn's very good. Um, Man, what a game. Uh, I, I hope, man, everybody in the state needs to have their TV on if you're not in that building because this, this is going to be a good one. Uh, two really good teams, regardless of outcome, two really good teams in the state Wednesday night. Uh, people that are big basketball fans in the state of Alabama, this is your night. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is the game uh, Wednesday night, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And look, let's, again, call in a spade a spade. Uh, Bruce Pearl has put a lot of emphasis on this game. Um, he his teams generally play pretty well in Tuscaloosa. Even last year, you know, we had to make a monster comeback to win that game. So I think it went to overtime last year in Tuscaloosa, and we ended up winning, right? It might have. Did we beat them in their place last year? Yeah, we we went two and zero against them last year. Um, yeah, and they did actually has a winning record against Bruce, which is wonderful. But I'm saying, you know, when I watch Auburn play, I'm like that team's got their act together. And yeah, no, I watched Tennessee we had playing like that. No team. chance to beat them on the road last year, and we did. I, I yeah. thought we had no chance to win that game just because playing a, playing a really good Auburn team on the road in their place that's really tough for Alabama. We see it in football, basketball, it's the same, but even worse because their basketball team's pretty elite. And uh, the, the other yeah. side, uh, I watched Arkansas again yesterday. In fact, I bet on Arkansas like a fool. Um, Arkansas stinks, they're a mess. I, they may get better at the end of the year, they stink. They're not good. They're not coached well. They're not disciplined. They're just not good. They're, they're a good they program. They're a good program, and Musselman is a good uh, – obviously, Musselman's results speak for themselves. He's a good coach, and they're a good program. I think what's going on with Arkansas, Lucas, is, is a, 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 a warning to those who, hey, you might have a good program and you might have a good coach, but when we're rebuilding a roster each and every each single season, season you're going to have stinkers because sometimes it just ain't going to come all together. Yeah and work right. And hey, that's going to happen to Alabama too. I think to some extent it's happened to Alabama this year, just not to the extent that it's happened to Arkansas. But what I'm saying is if you are rebuilding, it's happened to Calipari at Kentucky. When, when you have a new team every single year, some years it just ain't going to work out. I don't care what the recruiting rankings said you are. Uh, it just won't work out. And I think that's what's happened to Arkansas. This is just, this is their turn in the barrel. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with more until then roll tight everybody roll tight